Hey, welcome back to the Ray Moore Repair Channel. Today we're going to be working on this Kawasaki FR730V. Now the first thing we're going to do is just kind of blow this thing off and get as much dust out of the way as possible. We're going to be into the air filter. We're going to have the intake tract open. We're also going to have the valve covers off. So we want to get as much dust out of the way as possible. Next we'll be removing the air filter and uh, we're going to remove the air filter snorkel as well and get it out of the way because we're going to pull the shroud off. We want to make sure there's not any dust and debris built up underneath the shroud stopping the cooling air from getting down to the fins. Then we're going to take and stuff a rag down inside this intake to make sure nothing else gets in there that we don't want in there. So there's uh, I think a total of six bolts around this so we're going to take those out. Now this is a fuel pump right here and uh, it's just mounted to the side of the shroud. I'm going to take these two screws out here and like I say that way I don't have to mess with all the lines. So we'll simply take those screws out. I think we have to take this top part off and pull this screen because I think it's going to catch on the edge of the plastic. So I'm going to pop these little plastic rivets out and then we'll see what we got from there. And indeed it does. These look like T30s, and they are. Now we're going to remove the shroud. Should just pull off now. There we go. Everything's pretty clean in here. There's a little debris, but not bad. We're going to remove the spark plugs, make it easier to turn over and check them. I don't think they'll need to be replaced, but we'll check them and make sure. Plugs are really in pretty good shape. This one's a little brown, but uh, really it's running pretty good. You can see that the edges of the, the electrode are still in good shape. So we will not be replacing those. Now we're going to pull the valve cover off. There's several screws around here. Several bolts, I should say. And if you notice, they are not super tight. They're just pulled down good. So we will keep that in mind when we're putting this thing back together. <clears throat> and try to torque them down about like they were. Alright, we're going to put a... Uh, I don't call this a grease rag or a paper towel, but a shop towel maybe, uh, down here to catch any oil that runs out of this cover. And we're just going to give it a little love tap to break it loose and hopefully save the gasket, which it looks like we can. Well, I went on the interwebs and uh, found the valve specs for this thing. It is set at 10 to 15 millimeters, 0 0.10 to 0 0.15 millimeter on the intake and exhaust. And uh, for the metric deficient, that would be four to six thousandths an inches, so about five thousandths. Now, I am going to set these things at about 12.12 millimeter, 12 or 0.12. We're going to roll this thing around until we find top dead center. And our intake valve is down now. There was our decompressor. And we should be just about on top dead center right there. Now we're just a little on the tight side here. I've been messing with this for a little bit. And it's just a process of figuring out exactly where this bolt needs to be. That's pretty good. It'll almost hold its own weight there. I'm not sure how much you'll be able to see here because it's going to be more important that I can get my hand in here and actually adjust these. So uh, we can see that it's pretty loose now. So we're going to attempt to adjust this just a little bit tighter.
And that's pretty good. We can it'll almost hold the feeler gauges up. And once again, we got a range of 0.10 to 0.15 millimeter, and we're going right in the middle of 0.12. So uh, I'm going to call that good. We're going to take some of my favorite sealant here and apply it very lightly around here. This does not need much. We'll spread this around with my finger here in just a minute. And that would be why I put gloves on is this stuff will stay with you for days. I love it for sealant, but I don't like wearing it. Slide this back on. Like so. Wipe some of the goo off my hands here. Reach back and grab me a bolt. Plugs are back in. We'll put the plug wires back on. Now we'll put our shroud back on. Make sure our sparky wires are in the right place. Kind of like that. Then we'll put our bolts back in. You watched me take those out a while ago, so this shouldn't be any big Ah, you know what? We forgot to put the clip on the fuel line. How many of you guys saw that? I'm betting it was a bunch. There's a clip that goes right here on the fuel line. That's all right. I was just testing you. Like so. This is kind of interesting. They have shims under here to hold this up to the right height. I don't know if you have different engines or if you have different heights or not, but... Uh, that's how these are. My glove had a blowout. We'll put this back on. A little guard. Use these plastic reusable rivets. Now, underneath this air filter, this thing is still really clean. When we look up under its skirt, we can see it looks really good. So, we're going to pull that out. Put our clamp on. Same direction it was. And this just works down over that, like so.
All right, this is our oil drain right down here. It's got a step off the engine and a hole so it'll drain out without getting on everything. And uh, it's a really nice feature. We'll open that up. And it takes a while for it to drain. We'll pull the dipstick out to let it vent as easy as it can. All right, we found us a genuine Kawasaki oil filter. Uh, this has a part number of 49605-7007. Now I like to take these and write the hours that the engine currently has on it on the back of them. Now usually I have a pen to do this, but I can't find one of those. But I did find some of my daughter's fingernail paint. So I am going to write 228 on here, very illegibly. But I don't know what it says. Maybe. Eh, eh, eh. That's pretty good. Not really. I'm betting by the looks of those numbers, that's the reason I don't get invited to paint fingernails with her. I'm going to pull this engine kill wire off, the oil pressure indicator off, so I don't tear it up. Then I want to see if I can... No! I do have some makeshift oil filter pliers here. They may look like water pump pliers, but uh, right now, the oil filter removal tool. I like to take this off rather slowly and let it drain as I go. And it kind of keeps it from making a mess. Of course, as soon as you pull it off the stem in the center, a bunch more of it runs out. And we'll flip it up like that and then set it down in the pan. All right, my fingernail polish is dry now. So uh, we're going to put this on there. I'm going to take and grab just a little oil out of here. Put it around my gasket sealing surface. Doesn't take much and that's all we're going to give it. I do not pre-fill my filters for this. Never have. Seems like a waste when it's sitting on its side like this. That's the filter on. Now I'm going to reach down and turn the oil drain off. This down to a drip. Grab a wrench and tighten it on up. Here we go. Look at that. We're right at the full mark. Hook our uh, oil pressure wire back up. Oil pressure sending unit. Got a couple of drips off our funnel down here. Wipe those up. Oil level is right smack in the middle. By the time engine oil runs down back into the pan, it will be a little bit more. I'm going to add just a touch more to get us to the full mark. There we go. It is right there. So by the time it runs down, it'll be right on the full mark. For the uh, tune-up on the old FR730V Kawasaki V-twin air-cooled engine, 
that's uh, the valves adjusted, oil changed. We checked the cooling fans, checked the spark plugs, did all that stuff. And uh, everything looks like it's in good shape. Like I say, this engine only has 228 hours on it. I hope you enjoyed this and make sure to subscribe and uh, hit the like button. And we'll be making more stuff coming up in the future. Really enjoyed having you here on Raymore Repair Channel.